All right then, gamers. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, let's take a look at these balance patch notes. Here we go. Boom. There's a balance patch. Is a surprise balance patch, in fact. It's going to be dropping with End of Dragons. Here we go. We've got a handful of PvP changes. Yeah, the PvP players, they thought that Arena forgot them. But actually, no. CMC is here with his lightning whip to whip some professions in PvP right now. So... We're looking at Necromancer, all of Necromancer, Core Guardian, Tempest, Shadow Arts Thief, and Flamethrower Scrapper. So, let's get into it. Necromancer, this is probably going to be one of the juicier ones because Necro has been maybe causing a few problems in the PvP meta right now. So, let's see what they've actually done to attack it. So, on Holy Martyr, reduce the number of conditions removed when exiting Shroud from 3 to 2 in PvP only. That is actually a really big change. One of the things that was strong about Necromancer was that not only um, does it... Um, transfer con these it also has the ability to kind of like massively remove con these and refuel itself so what unholy martyr does is that it eats con these when you leave shroud and it also gives you life force when you do that so this is not only going to give it way less um sustain because less life force you're losing a con there which is actually significant for refueling yourself you're also going to have to you're not going to have that same level of cleanse and damage mitigation. And this also means that in a way you get a bit more punished for absorbing condies. Because Unholy Martyr actually eats condies. It like steals condies from nearby allies when you go in Shroud. So doing that's going to have a bit more of an opportunity cost to it as well. That's actually a pretty big change. Lifesteal is going down a lot as well. Uh, that's why I'm kind of eyeballing it around 33% um, nerf to lifesteal damage. And the lifesteal healing on the baseline vampiric trait and vampiric presence, which is what you um, which is what you take. And ooh, and you get a lower bonus while you're in shroud. This is actually really relevant um, because it's actually a lot of damage. Like vampiric presence and vampiric, these add up, especially when you take vampiric presence, which you pretty much always do, because it gives your allies more damage as well. And doubling it up while you're in Shroud um, is very, very powerful uh, because you actually take Carrion Amulet, right? And Carrion Amulet has power damage, and that means that, um, you know, it, you actually have a decent amount of scaling on that lifesteal, even if you're playing Condi. This is actually a very big nerf. Uh, I think, um, which is deserved, by the way, because um, not only are you going to do less damage, you're also going to be able to resustain yourself um, not quite as well. And you combine that with Unholy Martyr, you're going to be a decent amount squishier uh, with this approach. Boom! It's me from the future with a slightly messed up voice, but I had no choice but to record this slight correction because when reviewing these notes, I did not read this line correctly. Referring to Lesser Enfeeble, I thought it was talking about the weapon skill Enfeebling Blood, but I don't have any eyes, so I didn't notice that at the time. However, I did notice it now. So the big difference here is that Lesser Enfeeble is not the dagger fifth skill there, so it doesn't really have any implication on weapon balance. What it does have implications to is, of course, the overall overall balance of Core Necromancer. This ability is cast with the Weakening Shroud trait whenever you enter Death Shroud, causing an area effect boon corrupt and applying weakness and some bleeding. This is actually a really, really good change. In fact, arguably better than nerfing the dagger weapon set, because of course there's still a very strong option with focus, which might not necessarily affect Necromancer that this much. However, this change will. This trait is extremely powerful for Core Necromancer, as when you enter Shroud, you get this very oppressive, scary AoE that will do damage, corrupt a boon, and apply that ever so important weakness, which is a big defensive tool, in fact, in the core Necromancer's arsenal, just completely shutting down and obliterating power damage from anyone trying to pressure it. And on a very short cooldown too, as this trait actually doesn't have a cooldown, in fact, it will activate every single time you go in Shroud, which essentially gives it like a 10 second cooldown, but you get the point. There is actually a cooldown attached to it, a 10 second cooldown on the tooltip that actually refers specifically to the uh, weakness that you get on critical strike not the lesser and feeble but regardless this is actually a really good change i like this a lot in general just these kind of semi-passive almost uh, attacks that come in that can be a little bit difficult to play around, particularly when you're just you're trying to pressure the Necromancer. They go in Shroud and, oh, great, we've got weakness, can't do that much. 
So this change is really going to reduce that weakness application that is so important to the core necromancer's ability to not only shut down enemies, but also peel itself out of danger and, of course, other allies in these big team fights, where it can be very difficult to avoid every single application of these abilities, particularly one on such a short cooldown that can be activated as often as this lesser and feeble from weakening shroud. So an excellent change, and I think a good design approach in general with actually fixing this. So yeah, very, very good stuff. Good nerf and will definitely be significant. There's probably going to be a lot of impact felt by this when you're engaging core necromancers, particularly in these bigger, uh, larger scale and longer team fights where this can really add up and end up being very oppressive and make it very hard to shut down and deal with a core necromancer, particularly if they're able to build up a lot of shroud. Summon Flashworm, cooldown's gone up here to 40 seconds. You know, weirdly enough, actually... Fleshworm has fallen out of favor a little bit in competitive. Um, you're you a lot of necros are playing well of corruption now and well of darkness if they're playing the, a kind of like a duelist variant of that. Um, so that may not actually be the worst thing in the world outside of ranked. In ranked, this is definitely significant because there you kind of need that disengage to be able to get away because you know you can't necessarily rely on your team so much there as well. Oh, and here we go. The both of these changes are big. Actually, right, they are both big, right? Um, Lich form and death. Yeah, it's more of a Reaper nerf, right, to flesh one. Huge power scaling. I think that's a 33% nerf, kind of bringing it more in line with um, the big nuke to power, uh, the original CMC patch there. That is huge. It's been a long time coming for this, right? It really has been a long time coming. That is a massive damage reduction, and you don't refuel, and you don't get as much life force. That's also very significant significant. One of the things that you could do with Lich Form is juice yourself up so you get more health when you're in um, Lich Form. Uh, this means you're going to start with less levels because you can pre-cast Lich at the start of a match. And it also means that you can't use it as like this buffer tool to resustain yourself by generating life force there as well and then going into Shroud. That's actually a really relevant change. And the damage goes down a lot. Um, will you still play it? Honestly, probably yes. Um, I think the other alternatives are not super attractive for Necromancer right now. Um, you know, particularly on Reaper, right? Like the power damage spike is still going to be solid. No, not nearly as good, but it will still be solid for sure particularly when you combo it with um, the quickness that you get from dropping out of Shroud then very quickly liching to get a few auto attacks off. Um, it's significantly less attractive on uh, Core Necromancer, but I don't think Plague Lands can really compete with this realistically because um, it's just too slow. It doesn't really deliver value um, uh, in the same way. These are some good changes. Um, this has been a long time coming, and I'm really glad that these kind of got squeezed in um with the expansion particularly seeing as i think pvp is one of the game modes where the new end of dragon specs kind of struggle a little bit uh to deliver value outside of specter and vindicator so i really like this and they they actually do target some of the really key issues here which is the passive sustain on necromancer from unholy martyr and the lifesteal stuff and that also quite neatly reduces the damage seriously whenever you die to a necro guys see how much damage you actually took from vampiric presence and vampiric you'll be surprised how much it really was particularly if you're dealing with a team fight it's actually a very very high number you'll be surprised i guarantee it um so really good changes here um in that regard and yeah literal literal just not fun right it's just not fun we all know it right it's just not a fun ability to play against is it op yeah not really there's actually a lot of counterplay to it but is it fun nah it's not um i would actually really like to see stuff like the reaper elite skill being pushed and maybe even play glands right to kind of nudge those skills being used over this transformation effect of Lich Form. That would be my personal preference. Um, but listen, Azo, you can't Shrek see anything. You play Deadeye, right? Like, sit down, buddy. Uh <laughs> So let's see what CMC says here. Condition-based core necromancer is the most common variation, uh, boasting a high play rate and win rate in both taunts and rank play. True. Reaper and minion builds are a bit less common. Yeah, they got deleted, right? Like death magic got um, hit very hard, but it's still very extremely effective in the ranked environment and in almost every rating bracket. A common component in all these builds is the blood magic trait line. Yeah, this, and, and funny enough, I really love to read this because the blood magic trait line honestly is the problem here. It's a bit like shadow arts on Thief. That's how I'd describe it because it gives you like the best sustain and kind of the best damage too yeah spite can make you do more damage but the thing is you're going to be so much more vulnerable to con these um, and being shut down if you play spite that realistically it's not going to cut it unless you're playing core necromancer and and funnily enough core necromancer 
as a power build is I think a lot of people are starting to play it and it might even end up being pretty interesting um, after looking at this. So that's kind of interesting, right? Um, to look at this. But yeah, this is a very good change because the Blood Magic trade line is just, it's a bit too much jack of all trades. It gives you great damage with at the extra lifesteal and your allies too. Also supports your team with Unholy Martyr and gives you amazing sustain. Because again, Unholy Martyr, you take Condies, you drop Shroud, you eat those Condies and it gives you life force, which re-sustains you as well. And kind of chipping away at that is really good. And there's a lot of sustain loss from this. Trust me, this is a big deal. I like these changes here from CMC. And you can see that since he agrees with me, okay, um, the lifestyle traits in particular generate a ton of value over the course of an extended fight, contributing to both outgoing pressure and self-sustain. Unholy Martyr getting a slight shade to its cleanse also reduces the amount of life. Uh, just repeating what I'm saying, right? It seems he's ripping me off. Um, another defensive shade should give more chance to pressure enemy necromancers. Yeah, great. Very good. Uh, to further reduce Necromancer's survivability, Weakening Shroud will still provide a strong amount of weakness between its um, on-critical trigger and lesser and feeble, but the ladder coming down to three seconds should provide more opportunities to go aggressive in the cases where it can't be avoided or cleansed. Fleshworm also gets a slight cooldown increase to bring it more in line with other Necromancer stun breaks. Yeah, it's a very powerful uh, effect there. Like, it's it's one of the key tools that Necromancer has that kind of patches up its weaknesses. Its lack of disengage is one of the key Necromancer weaknesses, uh, and kind of increasing that cooldown will certainly help make sure that's a real thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. look, here you go. Lich, good counterplay exists. It can be more difficult to capitalize on these as a team in less cornered environment like ranked. Yes, yeah, so this is kind of almost like a ranked level thing that's being targeted. And that's important. Targeting ranked is important. The philosophy behind this is actually very, very key. Ooh, core guardian support. I, I, I can't believe this is all core guardians getting. I feel like this is, they're, they're being nice. Like core guardian is only getting signet of mercy in cruise cooldown from 90 to 135 seconds in PvP only. This is significant. Don't get me wrong. It absolutely is. Um, a, a big hit to this ability. Will it still see play? That's a, that's a good question. Um, <sighs> It is nearly, it's, it's not double the cooldown, right? It's it's like a 50% cooldown increase. The effect is so strong, though, that maybe you, maybe you're still going to run it anyway. Um, I honestly wouldn't, I'm not sure I'd make the call. I'd, I'd almost think that it's so good, you might play it. Uh, but that is a very, very big hit. So maybe you get more value throughout the game um, by playing something like uh, something like another shout, right? You could take uh, hold the line, right, for more protection, regeneration, of course, more cleanse. It's close, though. It's definitely close. This is, this is hefty, right? It's going to be much more of a trade-off um, if you're going to take this. You kind of have like a dead utility skill for a lot more. Um, uh, across the entire thing there as well. We'll have to see, right? We'll have to see how that goes. Um, but I think it's very hard to drop because it's just such a powerful effect. Even with a short, a longer cooldown, um, it's pretty wild, right? It's uh, it's pretty crazy. So I, to be honest, I don't see it being dropped um, realistically, but we will see what people find out and see what they, they figure out, particularly when the meta shifts as well with the expansion. Um, Core Garden is out, undoubtedly the best support build in the current state of the game. True! And we see this in both its play rate and win rate compared to other options. We're going to be keeping a close eye on the general pace of the meta following the changes to Necromancer, but currently we see Core Guardian as being fairly close to what we want out of support builds in terms of power level. There are things that can be shaved if we find a broader reduction to support builds um, is needed, but for now we want to improve diversity of the support by running other builds up to the level of Core Guardian. For this update, we started with Tempest, but for a follow-up patch, we're also investigating some buffs to support Warrior. Ah, cool. We've also started some investigation into what other specializations have potential to fit into the support role. Oh, which ones? That's what I want to know. But for the short term, we're prioritizing Tempest and Warrior as both of these have been the premier support builds in previous um, metas and feel the closest to competing with Guardian. Yep, that makes sense. That's exactly right. And of course, there was a time when Warrior was dominant, in fact. Hi, by the way, Humberding, thanks for the raid, man. I appreciate that. The one thing that we're touching with the support realm is the availability of resurrection utilities, namely Signet of Mercy and Glyph of Renewal. These skills are significantly more potent in slower metas where kills are less frequent, especially in the ranked environment where teams are less likely to coordinate cleaving or stomping while also interrupting the resurrection skill. Going forwards, we're going to be uh, elevating the pace of fights um, and what is the right availability for these skills. Right now, we believe the longer cooldown is warranted. This is actually, this is actually one of the reasons um, why 
this could be a lot more significant than you might think. You might go, well, you're never break, you're never gonna um, drop this now, right? But what if reviving someone isn't actually that valuable because kills happen way faster? Like exactly what CMC has, um, says here is super, super important, right? Slow metas where it's harder to get a kill, that is where res skills become incredibly impactful. If, you, you know, going downstate is a lot easier to generate, um, and it's, you know, you can finish people off uh, pretty quickly, and even getting revived isn't the end of what you can just keep barreling down. You, If you have the mentor, you can keep piling on the pressure, then the res skill loses value inherently. So in other words, what CMC is getting at here is that if, um, if the meta... Uh, speeds up a little bit, then it doesn't matter if Signet of Mercy revives you because you're just going to die again anyway. So in other words, you're going to be looking more towards prevention rather than um, reacting to it, right? So in other words, you're going to be looking to pack in as much support as you can onto your build as opposed to reviving people afterwards, right? So in other words, taking another supportive shout or taking merciful intervention for like a nuke heal, something like that um, could potentially be more interesting um, for a guardian. Just like more raw AoE healing, more raw support, which would kind of like move it towards the way Tempest plays out in a way. Like Tempest has a lot of raw support on it. Um, it's just that the Guardian like has uh, very key things here. I think one thing that doesn't get talked about here and... Uh, I don't think it's going to be t spoken about either with Tempest, is that Guardian has a bit of a monopoly on stability in PvP, particularly high stack stability. Tempest has like one stack, right, with the Earth trait line when you attune to Earth. Um, <laughs> with, called Rock Solid. Bit of a meme, like maybe you could look at buffing that trait. Maybe you could look at reducing the number of stacks that Guardian applies in PvP only. For example, nerfing uh, the F3 to two stacks, right, um, and uh, that's Indomitable Courage trait in Virtues to two stacks. You could also look at reducing reducing standing ground to three stacks as well as opposed to five because right now five stacks is kind of a lot it's hard to break through that with cc if it was three okay three ccs that's conceivable that you could interrupt someone with that you could you know coordinate and break through that same with two on the f3 or, or you know even one stack right you can you know just double tap someone and you'll be able to break that this is kind of how tempest um uh tempest uh, overloads are right you get one stack of stability when you activate them that's not that oppressive it's like oh you have to use two CCs to interrupt this player. That's actually quite interactive. Whereas my problem with Support Guardian is that I think it ends up very uninteractive uh, unless you're Thief, right? With the ability to interrupt um, through stability, which is very fun and well-designed, by the way. Um, it's hard to interact with a Guardian because you just can't CC them when they have that much stability access. So I think that would be my comment here that would probably need a look, even if we see Signet of Mercy kind of dissipate there a little bit there as well. But there you go. That's how it is. I think that, yeah, this is a almost like a, a passive approach here. And also, considering that Necromancer is one of the reasons why the meta slows down, I think the team is expecting the meta to speed up a little bit with Ender Dragons, particularly with Necromancer being nerfed. Therefore, there's like a, a meta shift nerf that will also affect Signet of Mercy. Meta goes faster, Signet of Mercy is worse as a result of that. Therefore, you nerf the cooldown, then, then it gets nerfed again by the meta shift, right? So in other words, you may not need to necessarily address the ability anymore. It will automatically get nuked, right? So I like the general approach here, but I would probably look at stability access if it's going to be on Guardian or maybe extending it to the other supports, uh, potentially like Tempest and Warrior or trying to tune it in that way. So let's see what's happening to Tempest. Whoa, dude, not that much text here. For this round of Tempest buffs, we primarily looked at the Earth variant. While the Fire variant was more commonly seen the last time that Tempest was getting regular play, we see Earth as the more well-rounded support build, giving a bit more protection back to elemental shielding and bumping up the healing of elemental bastion. In addition to um, additional use of fill the burn should give it um, give the more shout oriented earth build more impact yeah so you, you might go oh only half a second extra protection here but the feel the burn double tap is actually pretty interesting um feel the burn is pretty strong in pvp too it actually applies quite a lot of might i believe it's five stacks of might um in pvp as opposed to three in pve that's actually a good amount of buffing too and and that's relevant like giving might to targets like empower for example on guardian that's relevant same with like fire overload too um and blasting fills that's actually good in pvp the ability to do that now right now um i don't think you run feel the burn um 
on Tempus, you typically run a lot of defensives, right? You, you'll run stuff like um, Mist Form, Lightning Flash, and Glyph. Like, those are kind of like the ability. Even Magnetic Shield sometimes. You don't really fit Shouts in that much. Um, you typically kind of rely on Aura Share, right? Like, you know, your Dagger Aura Share, your Focus Aura Share, Overload Aura Share, right? Is typically where you generate um, these effects from here to get value out of stuff like Elemental Shielding, uh, for example. But, yeah, interesting stuff there, guys. Interesting stuff here as well. But they're actually giving some pretty hefty buffs, too. And you can almost see that they're trying to nudge you a little bit towards um, using Feel the Burn here. And uh, you can really see that here. Latent Stamina. So what this trait does is whenever you apply Vigor, you give Endurance back. So they're trying to nudge you towards running the Vigor trait and the, the Vigor and Regen trait and maybe taking um, the Feel the Burner, right? So you apply Vigor, Protection, uh, Regeneration, and you also give, right, um, you also give Stamina back. And that's actually relevant. Particularly, you can use that twice. That means, you know, if you're in a team fight with, say, three players, you're actually going to get a lot of value out of sharing that aura and applying Vigor. Now, this does mean you give up stability on Overload, and that is a heavy price to be honest, right? That, that is ugh, ugh, very tough, to be honest, because getting, you know, particularly something like water overload, right? It's super key. You want to be able to get that water overload off with that long cooldown and not having stability on a four second cast time. Ugh, ugh, that's, uh, that's, that's tough. But this is certainly a powerful effect, particularly as Elemental Bastion is also um, being uh, very strongly buffed here, right? That's a lot of extra healing, like an extra 0.25 healing scaling. Um, you don't have as much healing power because you have Avatar, but who knows? Maybe we're going to see a variant of Menders come back into the game. If the game would feel healthy with that, that would also kind of help things that have better healing power scaling uh, be more uh, be more beneficial there as well. But we'll see. Very, very interesting. Yeah, that's a good point there by Charlie L2, actually, is that uh, um, Feel the Burn's quite nice because it's an instant cast skill. So even if you get CC'd, you'll still be able to use it to heal and, uh, and apply support, like even while you are crowd control, which does have a level of relevance there as well. Yeah, Glyph gets nerfed here. Um, that that does kind of suck uh, because, you know, you know, the revival on Ellie is really strong too. You can teleport someone to you, you can full heal someone with the water glyph. It will still be a good effect. But I think that tr what, they're, what they're maybe trying to get you to do is to drop the glyph and take Feel the Burn, right? Um, is what they're looking for. So you take the Earth build, right? So you share out loads of protection. You're also restoring stamina with latent stamina um, and the Vigor trait, right? So you, you know, regen, Vigor, AoE healing, soothing, you know, you've got soothing mist for that big sustain because this is actually the advantage that Tempest has. Tempest actually does, in theory, generate a lot of value in longer fights compared to Guardian. Guardian will kind of like eventually run out of steam, whereas Tempest, it can kind of keep going forever, right? And keep rehealing, keep cleansing, keep providing support um, there as well. You know, if you have more auras to share out, like more aura share, elemental shielding duration is up. That's going to be a good amount of protection uptime, not only making the Tempest more durable, but also the entire team. So actually, pretty cool stuff here. Uh, I like the changes to Tempest, and that will certainly do a lot to bring it more in line there. Because um, it does just need a little bit more. And I think a real key part about Guardian being as strong as it is, um, is the ability to get these revives off without being uh, interrupted, right? Like, you know, having stability to deny this. So that element being taken away a little bit, um, if, if Signet stops seeing play, that actually does do more of a big change than you might necessarily expect there. I think Tempest might need a little bit more though, because again, I I'm concerned about the lack of stability here. I'd have, I think the change I would have put here would be increased the stacks of um, stability by one on rock solid and maybe increase the duration by one second as well. I'd have liked to have seen something like that because right now it's a very small radius of 240, I believe, and it's one stack for like two seconds, which I think is a very weak trait, um, even though it kind of has the potential to be interesting because you can proc it fairly often, right? Like, you know, if you, you know, it's, it's every time you're tuned to earth, right? So maybe look at that trait a little bit. Maybe, maybe two stacks is too much on such a short cooldown, actually. Maybe it should be one stack, but just for a little longer duration. I don't know. Could be interesting to look at, I think. Um, but we'll see how this develops there as well. But yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. And yeah, exactly. The shout oriented build is going to have that impact with that ammo. I like the ammo usage here. That is going to be super interesting to see how this one actually ends up playing out, uh, to be honest with you. Um, and I, I do like the the look at this. The, the only problem with latent stamina is that you have to give up um, the aura on overload um, trait to do that. So in other words, you it does replace that. And that will, of course, reduce your output. But... Um, 
I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. Like this is very interesting. I I think this will have some interesting changes, and they'll de people are definitely going to try this out at the very least. At the very least, we're going to see some experimentation. Look, you can you guys can ask Cran and Grimjack what they think of this stuff. All right, thief. The Shadow Arts trait line is a common topic of discussion when it comes to Thief Balance. Yeah, you can say that one again. Uh, we've been having some conversations um, uh, internally about common feedback. Like Hidden Thief and Melv of Shadows. But those discussions are still ongoing and for now we bumped up the cooldown on some of the stealth granting deception skills. Smoke Screen is also getting a duration reduction rather than a cooldown increase. A 7 seconds is a bit longer than we'd like to see on a 1 second pulse blind field. Now, hmm... Okay. Okay. <sighs> These are the changes I'm actually a little bit less certain about. Um, because it makes Shadow Arts Thief less good, but it doesn't... It, 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 it doesn't really address the problems with Shadow Arts Thief. And, and I understand because they're still discussing about maybe what they want to do with the traits themselves and how they'd want to change them. I get that, right? So they've tuned the numbers down a little bit. Um, but... Uh, uh, this is a good change because Smoke Screen is a very obnoxious ability. Projectile Destruction, AOE Pulsing Blind Field, not exactly that much fun to deal with. It being a shorter duration is pretty nice. Um, but I don't... Yeah. The problem is it's kind of nerfs all variants of Thief, not just the problematic variant, right? Of course, Shadows of Rejuvenation is the one trait there. It's the... Um, Basically, it, it regenerates you health while you're in stealth. So they're looking at the sustain of Shadow Watts a little bit there. But I don't think this really fixes the design issues, right? And, and that's just how sneaky and how evasive and how hard to shut down it really is. Um, of course, the cooldown increase is hefty. So it goes from 30 to 40. These will still be reduced by the trait, bear that in mind. So this will go down to uh, 32 seconds, I believe, compared to 24 right now. So it's an eight second cooldown increase. That is relevant, right? You will be able to have an easier time taking out Thief um, as it is right now. However, I do still think it will be pretty obnoxious to play against. Um, just not quite as good. Like that's all I have to say about Thief. I, I think that, uh, I, I think this, Oh, uh, no. I, I think we need to... I think there needs to be a, a bit of a long, hard look at the trait line in general. Like, the problem with Thief is just how annoying it is to play against, right? Like, how evasive, like, how sustaining it is. And again, a bit like Blood Magic, right? Shadow Arts actually delivers a lot of damage, too. You can actually bring DPS to the table using that trait line, which kind of causes problem you get like a, you get like a lifesteal spike on your stealth attacks uh just for free there as well and that that type of design is what made blood magic in a way so problematic it's like offensive and defensive at the same time um so you know stuff like deadly arts critical strikes getting you know nudged up a little bit um that could probably be looked at and then just stealth in general is probably a little bit out of whack you know this is too much of it right it's too easy to be perma stealth right which is honestly not a lot of fun to play against but that's how it is. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I do still think that Shadow Arts Thief is is going to be very powerful um, off the back of this, uh, to be honest. But we shall see indeed. All right. Flamethrower Scrapper. This I actually really like to see changes like this. Because Flamethrower Scrapper is one of those builds that's been under the radar. Is it good? Um, no. Would you see it in top level play? Nah. Um, not really. But is it actually a problem in the game? Absolutely. Um, so... The problem with Flamethrower Scrapper is, in a way, a very common problem that you see in video games. It's this idea of certain builds being way harder to play against than they are to play, right? So in other words, the, uh, the, the it provides this thing that's it's very good against people who are particularly new to the game and don't understand how to play around some of this stuff, and it leads to a huge amount of frustration. And honestly, Flamethrower Scrapper was the definition of that. It was in last month. It was literally as a dome trolling, okay, playing on Flamethrower Scrapper. It did not do very well um, at a high level, okay? Like, it, you know, it's it wasn't that good. But anyway, um... Basically, the, the damage is going down, okay? And now, and again, they're actually aware of this, right? We're making a short-term change while discussions are happening around the underlying issue. Yeah, so pulsing, you know, CMC is aware that, and this team, right, is aware that Juggernaut, the pulsing stability while you're in Flamethrower, 
is not good. Very unfun. But they're reducing just this auto attack damage, right? The auto attack damage is down a lot, a lot. That's a 40% nerf. And they're trying to maybe make it a little bit more towards the Condi element, just as a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, a token. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can have this, right? Not really going to help that much, uh, realistically, because this was basically a power scrapper build you'd see a lot of the time. Uh, in this regard too. But yeah, I think that noob stomper builds are really not good. Guild Wars 2 PvP is a, is tough to handle as a new player on its own. And a build that's like, honestly, I think they, you know, we need to talk about, su I think we need to talk about super speed. Okay. In general. Because the big problem is this build has like perma stab, perma super speed. So it chases after you, you can't get away and you can't CC it, right? And it just auto attacks you. It has like infinite pressure that never really runs out. It's not good, right? The design of this build is very, very scuffed. Like, ultra-high super speed stuff is just... You just don't want it in the game, right? Um, there are a few other builds that I think could actually be looked at in this regard, too, actually. I, I think that um, uh, stuff like Trapper Runes, like Trapper Ranger, uh, are probably, you know, again, not a good build, but very good against new people. Very hard to learn how to play around it. Uh, Dragon Hunter, even Berserker, like Power Berserker is a really big kind of stumbling block for new players because it just does so much damage and players aren't used to um, dodging, right? And understanding how to play around that, particularly that it has unblockable too. It has like um, a heavy unblockable signet, which means that the counter play is a little bit weird to something like Berserker. And that definitely causes... Um, pro, uh, newer players, a lot of difficulty in dealing with it. So, um, yeah, I like addressing builds like this um, because they aren't, it doesn't really affect the high level scene that much. It just makes it a little bit cozier for players who are learning the game and makes ranked a less frustrating experience. So, big fan of this there as well. We'll likely split the, pul the pulse interval of Juggernaut so we can find a better game wide solution. Yeah, I think that's good. I think, you know, they don't want to make it like bad in PvE. That's the issue here. So, the obvious solution is like whenever you, you know, something like just remove the stability, right? And add another boon instead, right? Or make it so that, you know, you whenever you go in flamethrower kit, ev once every like 30 seconds, you get like three stacks of stability. And then that just, you know, wears off after a while. Something like that. Um, but, or I don't know, like maybe even have some kind of weird interaction with um, if you get like, 10 hits off in a row, right, on someone, right, then it gives you a stack of stabs. Some kind of weird, like, rework to the trait. So they know they're going to have to hit it there a little bit. But there you go. That's what we have for today. As we briefly touched on, there are a few things that are already being looked into for post Ender Dragon's launch. We'll also be evaluating the state of the new elite specializations as we gather more real gameplay data. Ooh, spicy. Now, of course, um, I would expect some changes after the expansion too like if something's broken right they're probably going to fix it uh, i hope anyway um i think there is going to be a big patch and they talked about this a little bit there's going to be a big patch kind of after the launch at some point where they do some like kind of major reworks or more major reworks than we're seeing on launch a lot of these things are kind of tuning just playing with numbers a little bit just to make sure that things are in a good spot but i've got to say this these changes are great i do like these like not all of them are quite there i think thief probably needs like a proper look um just at that trait line looking at the design of that overall but the sentiment behind these things are good and i think these are going to be impactful as well like the necromancer ones in particular these are going to be very 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 potent i think the game's needed something like this for a long long time and i think the impact of that is going to be very 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 resonating actually this is going to be a big shift uh in you know, big speed up, to be honest, in how fast the game is, uh, that will certainly, you know, make these changes, like, all come together, right, particularly the Signet of Mercy, the revive traits here, revive skills, rather, like, combining all of this together is certainly going to alter the pacing of the game, and potentially really change the dynamic of PvP, this is a good patch, yeah, this is a damn good patch, yeah, yeah, the Ellie changes are really nice, too, yeah, I like this, I like the, I like that we're trying to bring Tempest in there, uh, Warrior eventually is going to be brought up into the mix there, too, very, very good stuff, um, in general, I like this a lot, I hope to see way more of this, um, uh, way more of this kind of after the expansion and just continuously, um, you know, afterwards, right? Let's get the regular balance. Look, I told you guys, it's the year of Guild Wars 2. Here's the energy, guys. Here is the gaming. I love to see it. Tempest is back. Guardian is back. Well, maybe a little bit, okay? Okay, Guardian is still here, though. Necromancer finally getting a bot. I mean, look, what more can you want? They're even trying to do something about Shadow Arts. 
What more do you want? Oh, yeah. One thing I mentioned about um, Thief here, I should mention about Thief here as well. A lot of the really, um, a lot of thieves don't actually run Smokescreen either, by the way. Uh, they typically just run um, Signet of Agility uh, instead, I believe. So you run you run Signet Shadow Step and Blinding Powder um, as opposed to the Smokescreen. So that's like a, a play style thing, but this will certainly push people uh, probably away from Smokescreen a fair bit because it's a very powerful effect and it's getting nerfed nearly in two, right? Which is pretty damn brutal, right? Okay. Uh, it's pretty damn brutal in indeed so there you go be aware of that signet gaming back on the menu oh yeah well how about that there's that's the news that is the news my friends